at the university, I had the opportunity to begin working on the brain mechanisms of aggression. And I pursued this with a laboratory for 25 years before I finally realized that the brain mechanisms of aggression have nothing to do with war and, uh, and uh, injustice. In fact, soldiers are not aggressive, they're afraid. And the people who make wars, the heads of state and the uh, generals, they're, they're not angry. Uh, they are simply following their, uh, their orders or making uh, policies uh, for their profit. Violence is not part of our genetics. It's not part of our evolutionary heritage. It is an invention. For the formerly colonial countries, there is a deep suspicion of anything which, in the absence of a better expression, I will call demasculinization by the more prosperous countries. And they feel that this attempt is actually an call to passivity and uh, carelessness about the defense of the country. The UK, France, United States, China, and Russia, they're the, the main nuclear powers and they run the UN Security Council. As long as that is the case, we cannot have a culture of peace. What we need is a radical change in global governance. Now, some people might think that's impossible, but I think it's possible and I'll tell you why because I think that the culture of war is very unstable and very precarious. And the reason I say that is from my experience of living in the Soviet Union in the 1970s and 80s and watching an empire crash from inside. And I see the same, the same thing happening now to the American empire. It's going to crash for the same reasons that the Soviet empire crashed. It's not supportable. In the United States now, there is no money for education or healthcare. All the money goes to the military. And the United States has hundreds of military bases around the world that are all vulnerable and are draining the American dollar. The dollar will crash. And when the dollar crashes, the American empire will crash and there will be a window of opportunity for something completely new, which is what we are working on. America used to be the ninja capital of the world till 1950s, but at the moment, India is. Likewise, India is uh, the world champion as far as acquisition of uh, um, uh, crimes under the National Security Act is the highest, though Gandhi still remains the most popular India, according to all surveys available. But I, I have also seen a new hostility to, the, to Gandhi and his ideas and, and a widespread feeling, increasingly uh, uh, widespread feeling that nonviolence is a technology of the weak. Yeah. Um, everybody has forgotten Gandhi's feeling that the, the truly brave are nonviolent. You know, no, don't forget that Gandhi claimed that the best nonviolent resistance against the British were shown by the Afghans, the Pathans. That Pathans had fought in four Afghan wars with the British and were undefeated by the British. And yet, at Gandhi's call, they joined the nonviolent struggle and nobody lifted even a stick to hit back. So that was true, true courage and true bravery and true masculinity. Hatred is a very powerful motive too. And once you have planted the seeds of hatred, once you have declared a community as your enemies, then automatically, 
automatically its infection spreads. When we, when we uh, developed the Culture of Peace program at UNESCO, we intervened in Mozambique and El Salvador after the civil wars in those countries. And you had a million people killed in each case or fleeing the country in each case. And we, we said to the ex-enemies, if you will work together, we will fund projects for you to work together in, in education and science and culture and communication. And we were able to get the, it, it took us years to do, but we were able to get the enemies who had been killing each other to work together. There are instances of where nonviolence has worked, even in states which we never thought would bend to nonviolence. There is only one case or one instance where Nazi Germany confronted a nonviolence demonstration. And in a book which describes this thing, it's called the Rosenstrasse Kines. Yeah. They talk, mention also the uh, conversation amongst the Nazi leaders. And there were suggestions that they should machine gun these German women who were, were, were flooding the chancellery. Yeah, and they were offering a kind of satyagraha, actually. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's exactly the case. And then the, it dawned on them that that will antagonize the entire German people. And they decided to uh, make compromise with them, release their husbands. In many cases, Jewish husbands too. So nonviolence can also work. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a matter of your patience versus their yeah, impatience. I just would add to the word patience. Uh, when I sign off on a letter now, I say peace, through struggle and patience. Our young people, they should struggle for justice and they should be patient because the world is changing. You won't know it from the newspapers. You won't know it from the television. In fact, there was a very famous jazz singer who, whose song was, the revolution will not be televised. Well, the, the, the great changes that are coming to the world will not be televised but they are coming. I'm convinced that the world is changing, that the culture of war has, is coming to an end. It's, it's, it's days, it's going to crash. And at that point, it's going to be in the hands of young people and their struggle.